And we're back and we're live with game two of a best of three. It's going to be Evil Geniuses versus Four Friends and Krilly. Best of three, EG leading the set one to zero. Welcome to the Corsair Summer 2013. I'm LD Beyond the Summit. He's Merlini. He just had a cookie. We're going to hop inside yeah. the draft. It's going to be EG on the dire side. Four Bringing sexy back. Call a shaker. 4FC on the Radiant. And this is the most obvious PL pick of EG's lives. Are you sure? What else would you go here? Anti they banned Anti-Mage. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. 4FC uh, have a ban. Uh, what do you go if PL gets removed here? I mean, we did see him go Faceless Void. It wouldn't be a bad pick in this situation. It wouldn't be great, but... I mean... It's four friends with Squirrely. They went Lone Druid and Enchantress. That just... I mean... Chantress, not as good as Chenet pushing, but it really does screen push early, and Evil Genius immediately picks up Keeper of Light. I don't know why more teams don't do this. If you're scared to push, pick your Keeper of Light, boom. If your Keeper of Light is a good player, push over. Push over, much yeah, that's it, on. that's it. And then you can pick a safe hero and just four on five, and then you'll get farmed up and just own from there. But Yeah, we've seen teams do really weird stuff to deal with it, like getting... We actually saw a Venomancer pick at one point. Yeah. That's just that's just strange. Just go with tried and true. Go with Keeper of Light. I mean, you can go like Shaker plus like one runner. Any two combinations too with like Power Shot, Shockwave. Those are very good at stopping pushes too. Okay, like I was wrong. Not a PL. A Morphling. Any particular reason why you go Morphling here? I think they're just trying to experiment a bit. Trying to experiment a bit. I mean, PL is definitely the better pick here. Lone Druid fares very poorly versus it. Per taking off the. The Rabid, too. No AoE on a Lone Druid. Most of them go for Radiance, but that, that does not do anything versus Illusions. Too slow damage. And Morphling's a little bit better versus Windrunner, I suppose, because he does have that uh, really heavy magical damage. But, I mean, it's nice. We've seen them experiment with it a little bit before when PowerNet was standing in for Demon, but Morphling is sometimes picked against Nakes, too, just because he has a lot of uh, mobility and natural Ghost Scepter carry, one of the very, very few Ghost Scepter carries. But, I mean, he was popular at TI2. Maybe people are trying to, trying to bring him back before TI3. Yeah, EG, maybe just... Exper I think it's just experimenting here, to be honest. They'll try the Morphin. It's a decent split push carry. PL is, uh, for a number of reasons, probably the easier and safer choice, yeah. but... I think 4FC are still going to struggle a lot against Morphling. Yeah. They have no natural silence. They have no natural long-duration stuns. Mm. Well, they have Shackle. They have Power Shot, but not reliable ones. Mm. And early Lincolns, there aren't many ways to remove that. Just the Entangle if it procs, the Shackle Shot, and I guess Enchant for the slow. But that's about it. Evil Genius also has like a ridiculous amount of mobility with Keeper Light Recall, with Chen Senbat, with Replicate on the Morphling and Puck being already in pretty mobile heroes as is, I think that they can just outmaneuver four friends with Skrilly just like they did last game. If EG wants to experiment, I would personally prefer if they just tried a different type of strategy instead of four protect one with a different hero for fear, but... Yeah. yeah. I feel like at least... Well, they could go dual lanes too with du dual solo. They that's could do Coddle Shaker. That's true. They could do a Puck safe lane, a, a Morphly Maiden, and then like an off lane Coddle Shaker, Chen in the jungle. That would that's be cool. Option. Uh, yeah, Morphling would do okay mid this yeah. game, or safe lane, I guess, it doesn't do, it's decent against Lone Druid, you're not going to die, but he mm. should out harass you a bit. And introducing the lineup for 4 FC, we have Strang B, the captain, the drafter, on Venomancer. We have Krille, the namesake of their team, on Lone Druid. He plays a pretty decent Lone Druid, although he goes for a greedier build than most. Stand in 61, apostrophe 16, on Marana. Boomski, the Romain Enchantress, they're... Definite Roamer, and Blomberg, last but not least, on the Windrunner. I believe he's a solo mid player. Yeah, it looks like we, we do need our overlay for this game, but uh, for 4FC, they are trailing 0-1 in the best of three. As for EG, they are one win away from moving out of this group. We'll have Fear on the Morphling, Bdiz handling the Chen, EG on the Dire Squad, the Dire Side, Jo playing the Puck towards the bottom lane, Demon on the Keeper of the Light. Oh, is it going to be a Shadow Blade Keeper of the Light? It is a lot of fun to is watch. Is there going to be a Blink Chen? This is Demon likes to get a bit clowny with Keeper of the Light. I know you you've talked a lot. We don't we never see these Asian players go for well we've I say Asian players, I mean the Chinese players. They never really go for those shenanigans like hiding in the trees, eating trees and just juking into weird locations and just trying to sneak experience from there. Demon, he loves to do that sort of stuff. So I'm hoping we'll get to see some. It's back to two one two. This is awesome. Two one two. Well, one in the jungle, so kind of a 1-1-2 one, one, plus yeah. one. That's but. awesome, though. Caudal Shaker in the offlane, that is something new. And he can shut down Lone Druid's farm. The only problem is that they are super susceptible to ganks, and they do not have any of their rewards. I am feared for their life if they decide to TP rotate from 4FC. 
I wonder if EG is going to go for the fissure blocks again. We saw this from them Jeez. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Use fissure block like this, uh, or you just fissure and then well, the creeps come sure. in. It looks like he's going to... No, no? No? Meanwhile, I'm Haste surprised. of Strangby. Fear is going to just rotate mid. They don't want him to get to the aggressive try, and they want him in an easier matchup. And now that they... Maybe they thought it was a lone druid, but now they know it's not the case. In fact, <laughs> Jo's going to get caught by a gale. Decent chip oh, damage. Arrow. Oh, the arrow from downtown. The stand-in 61-16 has done it. First blood to 4FC. All of it set up. Face shifted, bro. He didn't have it skilled. He skilled up Looster Orb, unable to skill and push it up fast enough. That's why you need the hotkeys to skill it. Too slow on that. It was a good arrow, though. It was a great arrow. And set up by a nice ward. They made an early foray into the enemy jungle, and they punished. Mm -hmm. They punished DG. I mean, they had the Observer Ward up top, and they saw them coming, so I'm actually very surprised that J.O. did not play a little bit more safely. Yeah, feeling confident that he wouldn't get picked off. He was wrong about that. And now we'll have Jungle Wars. Something exciting and interesting to look forward to will be this Enchantress versus the oh. Boomski. Spear Bear is ready for this pull. Look at this. He is just oh, sitting on top of Bambo and trying to drag the creep so he can't pull it. Very smart play by Bambo there. Yeah, and quick or, recognition. Oh, it's actually Krilly. Krilly, yeah. Bambo on the Earth Shaker. Also, just really quick recognition as well to, mm. to see that and in instantly respond. We've seen a couple of teams wait like, I don't know, two minutes, three or four minutes to react to this uh, ancient pulling shenanigans, but they're on the ball here. And as far as the lanes go, well, Fear's dominating his lane. Six and seven already, waving forward. He has been pulled regen, whereas Blomberg has not. So, well, Fear is taking a lot of frass. He'll have a bottle soon. And I imagine we'll need to do a bit of bottle crowing. In my oh, experience, play more mid than new more tornado coming pretty out hard. from the gen. Yeah, GG to the lane. It's, it is pretty hard to actually stay in the lane without constant bottle crow. Just because oh. this hero, is, his spells are very expensive now with the new, the new morph costing 30 mana a second. He, managed, he did manage to pull two creeps and stack the camp. So the wave will be pulled back a little bit for EG. Oh, oh they're actually smoking. And there's an invis rune from Bambo. They have no wards on bottom. I wonder if Krilly knows what's up. Beatus and Bambo grouped up as two. Heading towards maybe the middle lane. Beatus still in the jungle. They'll take over Wildkin. More tornadoes this game. Blomberg throwing out the power shot. Oh, is he going to have a sick block here? Yes, he is. Really in trouble. He's got no tangos. He's going to be surrounded and probably brought down in a hurry. The Wildkin, good body blocking, good control here from Bambo. And it won't be the first blood, but it will be retaliation for EG. Great they, block by Bambo. They get one on the bottom. I mean, this just totally opens up the lane for them. Being able to creep pull, get a lot of experience on your heroes, and nice rotation from B to going top, knowing that he can't really do that much versus triple lane. Just let, just let J.O. suffer. All he needs is levels. He doesn't really need that much farm. As long as you have bottle boots, you can still do a lot of work if you are good with your phase shifts and your orbs. Boobski trying to put a lot of pressure on him, and they're actually pulling his own creeps into into the jungle right now, and it looks like they're coming out way ahead on experience. I mean, the big lane. the big thing for me, though, is 4FC can't really kill the puck. Like, sure, they had the level 1 kill, mm -hmm. but now that he's got phase shift, he should never get hit by arrow. It's going to be very hard to yeah, gale It was a good lane rotation from them. Uh, and me on the meantime, EG can completely destroy this lone druid if Krilly enters the lane. So I would say overall pretty big advantage to EG there. Yep, man. but Jo is forced to stand around his T2, not able to get any experience. We see Strangby play very aggressively, but he should just be able to orb to safety. Orbing back, beat is spotting that bear out, but can't do a damn thing. It'll be a massive wave. Pull to the tier two, and this also prevents them from really pressuring the tier one. So nice play by Krilly, despite giving up a first blood. He is up against a tri lane for quite a while now, a good two minutes. And holding his own, getting some CS under the tower. Doing a pretty good job, all things considered. And first tower should be falling soon Radiant on the bottom lane. There is the glyph of fortification. No heroes there, Radiant's but what can Curly do for in this situation? Almost nothing. He just, just pull with the bear. That's all you can do. Yep. He does have a stout shield in his stash. I'm all about that stout shield on that bear. <laughs> They're going to try and make it go in J.O., but how, oh, what do you do? Nice face you could just face shift dodge Radiant's the Gale. You can face shift dodge the arrow. Maybe if Enchantress has two perfect creeps, mm -hmm. which she pretty much has now, potentially you can tower dive, but... Yeah, you really have to Very re dangerous. reconsider the Venomancer pick at this point. And Radiant's they picked it up fairly early in the draft. I think it's a, it's a nice sneak pick if if the uh, if it, the draft suits it. Yeah, if he can actually gank people. But I mean, they have they have the puck. They have a morphling. Poison is not the best against those two. Yeah, you really want burst and silence against morphling, and they don't have that. Mm. And against the puck, well, silences are nice too. Uh, the Venno pick, that's the one question. There's the question there, and then there's also the Marana pick. And we kind of jumped in towards the end of the draft, but 
Murana with the pro main shield. There's Very no surprised. there's no great setup for the Murana is the main issue. Like Gale is decent, but yeah. they don't have a Shadow Demon. Meanwhile, Hasted Fear doing all kinds of work, man. And, and even if you Twilight or Moonlight Shadow into the fight, what are you going to do? There's no, like, Earthshaker to drop a huge Echo Slam bomb or, like, a Puck to just silence and coil everybody. It's just very lackluster in terms of their lineup. What, what is it exactly supposed to accomplish in team fights or in the early game phase if they can't get a couple of kills? Well, it's 1-1 one to one our score. Five and a half minutes in. The lead farmer of this game is actually Demon on the Keeper of the Light. He's got an early Quelling Blade. He's got... The makings of a mech. I did. I think he last hit the tower earlier, uh, and just really being efficient on his 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 keeper of the light. Very impressive play from yeah, him. Yeah, he almost has his mech six minutes, and that is very impressive. <laughs> I guess he's had a complete free farm lane bottom, and his last hit every single creep. Thirty-seven and one. There's your mech. Six minutes. That's filthy. Yeah. Demons, Again, I, Demons had some down games lately, but I mean, this is disgustingly <laughs> good farm. T1 about to fall. Jo again, can't really do anything against this lane. I don't really know why Keeper of Life fell off so much. His Illuminate got nerfed a little bit, but not to the point where he's just very obscure hero. And he not only can defend against pushes, he's actually good at putting a lot of pressure on solo heroes, abusing jungle pill pools, trying to contest them, and just being a very mobile fountain. And just a great support overall. I think Demon's playing very well this game. Yeah, he is. He's taken down a tier one bottom lane. He had some help in doing so. Bambo providing that assistance. Bambo has sacrificed himself a bit to make this happen, though. It's only level two on Bambo. Not a whole lot of experience. He sets up mid and he looks for a gank. But Blomberg hiding at the tower for the time being. Should be okay. The mid lane is going Fear's way. He got pulled. The Windrunner didn't, but... He has so many denies. 17 denies versus a ranged hero. That it's has very hurt. hard when you see Fear has 96 damage and Blomberg has 69. It's... Very hard to knock There's it There's a gank coming. Fissure block. Bambo's looking for it. He'll find the angle. Well placed, but here comes the TP reaction. Shackle the fly. Won't connect. No arrow just yet. And the Gale, they don't actually really have enough damage to bring out Vitas. They're still chasing. Marana leaping to the north. Finds Bambo. Starfall's there. Turn the wrong direction. A little bit slow on the chase. Another Fissure. And still the chase continues. The stand-in really wanting this kill, but will not be able to find it. He'll back off. And he pings for the mech out, and they are good to go. This seven-minute mech, so good for EG. This is actually a really farm keeper is super nice for Morphling, too, because his mana is always an issue until you get a Lincoln's a big mana item, and, well, it won't be here. Oh, wow. Look at that Enchantress. Caught a channel, caught a blast into a Shaker, or a Shaker Fissure into a Morphling waveform. Instant kill <laughs> on that. Yeah, the, the, the Bambi hits the floor here. <laughs> they need a ward up in middle, though. EG has been putting a relatively large amount of pressure on the bottom lane in the, main lane, in the mid lane. Those are the hot spots where you need vision from 4FC, but the supports are pretty poor. It looks like Venomaster has 200 gold, though, to his name, and the, the setup for Keeper Light just requires like three seconds, and then after the Fissure comes, it's, it's already over. You need to be prepared ahead of time. Scout out the heroes, know where they're going to rotate, and just be aware of that massive amount of birds. It's an old school combo. People aren't too used to playing versus it, but it is incredibly potent when used like this by EG. Yeah, the, the one thing that's going to be hard for them now is that EG have a lot of mobility. They have, have the Keeper of the Light and his ability to recall heroes across the map. They have Replicate, obviously Puck's mobile, simply... Uh, through the orb, the phase shift, and eventually the blink dagger. So it's a bit hard to keep track of heroes even with all those wards. But they do have some now. One at the top rune, one in the jungle. And, well, Krilly's found some farm on the bottom lane. But against 4FC, this seems to be a recipe to put them in harm's way. As if Krilly has a bad start, they seem to rely an awful lot on him just getting ultra fat. And unlike Fear, just hasn't quite had the success in doing so. This gold graph is still pretty close, though. He has a 9-minute Midas on the... It's not bad yeah. against an offensive tri lane, but it's, you know, it's not that dominant start that we've seen from him in, against uh, Denial Esports. Right. So only 500 gold in favor of EG. And tower count is even for both teams. And EG is making... Or both teams are making very good use of their jungle right now. Just farming away. Use those Midases. Farm Dota. Get that value. Yeah. We're... we're We'll see how many Midas's the teams go for this game. Could see a Midas Enchantress if we want to see a very late one. Uh, 4FC are greedy. I don't know if they're that greedy, though. EG, I feel they could force some towers here with the mech and the Keeper of the Light. Sure, they don't have... Then they have Chen Creeps, actually. So, Beta's only level 3. Do it's, they need wow, to, though? I think Fear, like, just just uh, Morphling alone will be enough to carry this if he has a little bit more farm than Krilly, which he, which he does at this point. So, I mean, the pressure's not really on, though. I think if 4 FC pushes, is a huge mistake just because they have so many defensive abilities. Blumberg in a little bit of trouble in the mid lane. 
Fear taking a lot of damage. Oh, if that arrow was on the mark, Fear probably would have died there. He's playing rather aggressively. He's sitting on very yeah. little agility. He did morph a lot of strength just now, but he was on maybe 500, 600 HP there. They have the mech. They could make a push right now if they want to, but just content to farm up a little bit. Gale's going to connect on Fear. He'll actually wave forward anyway. The double damage room going to Blomberg. Fear might be in trouble. I don't know if he gets out of this. The arrow comes through. Power shot as well. Still alive. Still morphing to strength. The mech from Demon. Now a shackle, however. Watching him in place. Still alive. Still alive. He's going to live. Oh, and get a kill. That's excruciating. Maybe not now, though. Krilly's trying to cut off the path of retreat. And now they've surrounded him. They've cornered the water, man. Can they give him mana? Demon, it's cooling down. No access to do it yet. There's your Starfall. At long last, they've brought Waterman down. Now the Imps on Demon coming through. The mech armor not going to help him here. Another arrow from 6116. That's three big arrows this game. They'll lose the Morphling. They'll lose their very far. Where is the, the Shaker? Light. I think they need the, him in these sort of engagements. I wouldn't mind seeing the Chen, but Betas is also 11 minutes in and level 4. Yeah, so he's I, that, just playing catch up. I don't know what's going on with his Chen, too. I didn't really see him do too much with the Greeks. He was in the bottom lane, and but him and Urshik are both a little bit under farmed here. Nice recall by the Keyword Light, bringing J.O. in to help out Fear. Unfortunately, Fear died in the process. That will hamper his farm pretty hardy. Har har hardily? Hardy? Hardy? Pretty hardily. heavily. Heavily. 1,000 gold. I wonder what he built he's going to go for this game. Uh, for the Morphling? Yeah. I, I mean, we talked about how, you talked about how Lincoln's before. There's not too, not too many things that pops it. He's been fighting a lot, though, so I'm not sure if he's actually going to be able to farm that Lincoln's. It's an okay BKB game. There's still Root. There's a lot, decent amount of magic damage. It would help you a lot against Impetus, but the nature of their lineup is only one hero that dishes out a lot of damage late game. So, I think he really does have to go for more of a hard carry build, not... Uh, an early BKB because yeah. they don't have the best lineup just to force fights. Only the Puck who can really do it. Actually, Jay was Blink. I mean, maybe you could go BKB. You just have to make a lot of early fights happen. Or if you go for that, then it's going to neuter your mid to late game presence quite a bit. J.O. has a pretty early blink considering the yeah, amount of pressure that he, he was under and considering the fact that he gave first blood. And I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm part of it just goes back to Forpsy not having a very strong tri lane against the Puck. Like, Gale, Arrow, not useful against Phase Shift. And Jay has done a nice job of staying alive. And this Morphling pick, again, I'm not so sure about it, especially with the interaction between Enchantress and Morphling. Enchantress can just steal the Replicate and control himself. String B is blocked in. Nice block by Earthshaker. And then another kill for Jay. Not having to work too hard for these. String B just a little bit out of position, wandering through the river. Will get picked off. They do have a Midas Sloan Druid. Krilly starting to catch up in terms of farm. Actually almost caught up with Fear. If there's one thing Krilly's good at, it is farming. If you leave him alone, he will find the creeps. Mm -hmm. They took the T1 tower down, but usually after that, you want to play very aggressively in their jungle, just completely take it over so they can't catch up and farm. And now that T1 tower down is actually working heavily in their favor because he, he just has so much more room to farm since EG's been constantly preoccupied in the mid and top areas. A lot of, of it's their heroes. Like, they don't have a hero that just sets up shop in your jungle and keeps on killing you. There's no bounty hunter, there's no storm spirit. There is the puck for J.O., but J.O.'s been preoccupied elsewhere, mid and top for the most part. And Krilly's actually gotten, as you said, a ton of space. And I wonder what he built he's going for. He typically goes for the Radiance, but I'm not sure if he's going to get that much time to free farm. He might. Uh, yeah, he you, might. Can't, you can't make a replicate of the bear, so Radiance on the Spirit Bear is actually not a bad way to go. You can make a replicate on the bear? No, you can't. Oh, you can't. Oh, I thought, I thought you said you did. I was like, what? That would be awesome. That would be Imba. I would have liked my own, own very pet. Own very own pet panda. That would be so Himba if you could make a replicate of the spirit bear. That'd be so awesome. Oh my god. Because they don't even take reduced damage, so. <laughs> 2700 HP radiance tank, no problem. Yeah. So, well, you can't do that, but. <laughs> I'm not enunciating. One can only dream. I'm not enunciating very well. I think that's part of the problem here. <laughs> kind of mumbling. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I will work on that. But 4FC, three heroes grouped up bottom lane. Krilly continuing to farm. Midas cooling down. So if he does want to go for Relic, I think he'll have it by like the 16 minute mark or so. Wow, yeah. he They, they only killed him one time on bottom and he has caught up so nicely. Fear's gone for an ultimate orb. Uh, let's... Lincoln's Manta for the, the Entangle wouldn't be bad. Yeah, they're both not bad choices. I don't know if they're the best choices. For Morphling, it's all, that first item is always like, well, now I've gotten started farming. Yeah. It's really not yeah. until you get that the second item at least, especially if it's in Theory Blade. Then you start to pack a punch. Then you could really start to fight. He's kind of weird as far as carries. Like, some carries just get involved after one item, but...
not the Morphling. You're playing very aggressively on top. Moonlight Shadow will come out to try and straight string B. I think that they could abuse the mobility of their lineup. You talked about it with the Replicate, with the Keeper of the Light recall, and with the Chen Test of Faith, but th we haven't really seen them use it too much aside from the one recall on J.O. I feel like they could apply a lot more pressure around the map. Still fear, Heidi in the tree line, killing off wards left, right, and center. He'll wave south, he'll TP out, and even though they try to rotate to pick him off, they're too late. Four heroes oh, for 4C, and, and the, the tower freeze. goes down. Well played by Betas, finishing off the tower. He'll lose a creep for this, but... They're looking for Curly on bottom. J.O. with a nice dream coil. Curly tries to TP out. He's almost got his relic. It's not a time to die. He TPs home and dies during the TP. The dream coil. Did the coil break kill him? Yep. If you TP back before the dream coil hits, you get stunned in fountain, and that little bit of extra damage will he, just barely enough. He, he didn't have a choice, though. If he didn't TP right there, he's going to die just to auto attack, so... Mm. 3,100 gold to his name. He was very close to his relic. Unfortunately, won't be able to pick it up. That will delay it by a couple of minutes. Yeah, now it's maybe going to be a 17, 18 minute relic. So they find him at the right time. They do pick him off. And Fear, now a bit farther ahead, about 700 gold ahead. It's still a long way to go before he's going to be that one man wrecking crew. That's sort of the. Morphling's not really the best flash farmer. Like, he's decent, but he's not a PL. He's not an anti mage with a Battle Fury. Mm -hmm. uh, the big reason that Morphling was so popular for so long is because he just lanes really well as a carry. Waveform's great, almost impossible to kill well, with Morph. Two-man crew in middle. Are they going to be able to snipe Bloomberg at the tower? Blomberg, rather. They found Boomski. He's hiding in the neutrals. For the time being, he's okay. That's going to be a full duration nuke. Oh, no. He walks through. He's going to get out. A shackle holds Bambo in place. Blomberg on the run. Still alive. He's going to be monoleaked and drop quickly. Continues to run. Strang be giving chase. Waving forward to Sphere. Whiffs on the waveform. Now a Fissure coming through by Bambo again. Can't hit Blomberg. That Starfall caught everyone. Have EG just completely overextended. Don't lose one. Demon on the back foot. Now Bambo hiding in the trees. They scatter to the winds. So many misspells there. Missed the Gale. Missed, missed the Fissure. Missed the Fissure. I mean... Did he... I didn't actually... What happened with the Dream Coil? Oh, they're gonna find Strang me now. Scratching Bambo. Hidden Fissure. He'll come out and kill him. Lose your orb two into them when Puck was really low? It's questionable. Yeah, he. I don't know if he could have gotten out there, but he certainly made life harder. There's your Starfall. Fear dropping low. Shackle's going to hold him in position. He's probably going down as well. Still dropping. Not dead yet. In comes Krilly. Needs a root here from the backside to find that kill. Now Fear up to 800 HP. Demon trying oh, to TP out. Another yeah. arrow. Another death for EG. There's your power shot. Score is 5 to 8. It's... A hard game for EG in terms of gold. They're actually in terms of experience. They're only ahead by 500. In terms of gold, up by 3,000, but they have three towers, or actually two to one. So a one tower advantage, only a 3K gold lead. Mm -hmm. And Keeper of Light's actually really farm too. 5,500 gold. The second farmer, lead farmer for EG, just behind Priest of the Moon. What is actually what actually is Priest of the Moon going for? Looks like an early Yasha build. They found Boomski in the river. There's Ooh. your blink silence. Brains him down in a hurry. Two hero shackle, but no way to engage. The courier will retreat. And they really need the blink on the Urshaker. I think if they had that and Bambo can actually get in position for some big spells. Again, 4FC does not have really big team fight heroes. Nothing's like, oh my gosh, this spell just went off. I mean, Poison Nova is annoying, and Root is also annoying. Moonlight Shadow, if you're prepared for it, it's not a big deal. And Shackle, they're all, they're all like mediocre spells, but nothing totally team fight changing. Once they have that Ur Earthshaker and they catch a couple of people in Dream Coil, they don't have any BKBs or BKB heroes on the side of 4FC. This heavy magical damage lineup from EG, coupled perhaps with a Veil that we saw the THD get last game, could be huge for them. For 4FC, they could build a pipe on some of these heroes, maybe on the Lone Druid. At least getting a casual cloak would help, but... Uh, I guess no natural mech carry aside from Windrunner, and that Windrunner, only 1,400 gold. Blomberg not choosing how to spend as yet, so they're vulnerable just to the AoE combo. They are five ranged here lineup, so they should be able to, well, I guess Lone Druid's melee, but they should be able to spread fairly nicely. There's a smoke, they ping on Roshi, and it looks like they're going to go for it, and there's only one ward up on 4FC, and that's in the middle lane. Again, they don't, they don't have that great of vision, and 4FC has been lacking on that in the series and most of the games that I see them. They just don't have a very good idea of where the opponent team is, and they can just abuse this fact very, very heavily. EG's going to go for Roche now. Jail working on the Roche with fear in the pit. They'll take a tier one mid. The fact that EG's not defending should be very suspicious, but they don't even throw an arrow towards the pit. Blomberg not power shine. They've got so many ways to scout, even the Plague Wards. 
but nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's too difficult for them to contest, too. They can easily just get blocked off by a fissure over here, by a fissure over here, anything like that. If they stuck around, they would just get hit by Illuminate after and a Dream Coil. Things would just be very terrible for them, but you really have to go in there before the Roshan falls. They have decent spells to scout it out. They have Arrow for it. They have the Bear that can go in. They have the Venomancer Wards as well as a Power Shot. So it's not like they don't have things that can actually scout out. They just weren't aware at the time. I think you're tired too. What did I say? I just listed all their mission spells. You did? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. I'm completely zoning out. <laughs> it's cool. I'm sure I've missed like 30 things you've said as well, Merlini. But... Wow. Uh, we've been up for a while. We make a great combo. Yeah, we're, that synergy. That value. Combo. Wombo combo. I have an idea. Why don't you just keep casting for the rest of the time so I don't have to repeat you? Oh. <laughs> Are you dodging this cast? <laughs> is, that, is that really happening to me right now? Well, 4FC, they trail 5-9 to nine in a best of 3. They're down in this game 2, I should say. In the best of 3, they're down 0-1. If they lose this game, they're out. EG now leading by 5k gold, 500 experience. They march down the middle lane. B Diz leading the charge, blinking forward is Bambo. They've isolated Strang B. He'll be picked off again. Test of faith to the face. There's a the blink dagger from Bambo. It just doesn't sound as good if it's not balls to the face, but only only Lumi gets to say that. They have the illuminate ball. That's not really a ball. Horses. It's a ball of light, I guess. I heard I heard greetings. And Jo is gonna head back towards mid. EG looking to push a bit here. See, this is what I'm talking about, the replicate steal with the enchanters. And although it's not on the bear, it's still rather annoying for the Morphling. You can't use your image to bait most of the time because the enchanters can just test if it's an image or not with the slow. And if it is, you get a free replicate, send it back to your fountain. Morphling still can replicate to it. And if it's in a very bad position, if they try to choose a bear to put it up very aggressively or scout with it, he can just TB to it. But most of the time, if you just send it back to your fountain, he has no chance of escaping after that. Yeah, either way they went, beat a Morphling or an, uh, a PL, it would have been somewhat annoying. You can enchant the illusions too, but uh, obviously with Morphling, he's got that one big replicate. He really wants to make something happen with it. EG Park mid just sieging this out. Arrow comes through. Shackle as well. Latching Jail in place. Now a jump in from the Murana, but there's your Echo Slam by Bambo Dota. He's caught too. Krilly on the run. Bambo trying to dunk the opponents, but it looks like his own Fissure has actually cost him his own life. Only the Windrunner to fall. Fear on the run. Your Siege Cannon Boomski is doing all the work in the world. Now Fear should be able to make it out safely. He's got a Lincoln. Ooh, close arrow though by the stand-in. It's close, but no cigar. Now a Replicate from Fear heading up to the high ground. Closer to beat is Mike gets sent home. He'll be okay. They actually do defend. Did anyone buy back? Uh, just Bambo on the Earth. I think they were trying to make a timing push with the Aegis right before the Radiance hit, but unfortunately, Krilly a little bit too far and has that Radiance 20 minutes in and almost nice initiate by Bambo. I would like to see it just a tad bit earlier to save Jo. Jo was unable to get any spells off. They actually don't have. Uh, I don't think they had a ward up there at the time, just because he got hit before all that happened. But yeah, they just put this. Yeah, Jo not having, not being able to get any of the spells off at that time just really hurt them. Either a test of faith, hand of God, mech, do anything you can to try and save them, but most importantly, the Earthshaker initiate. Uh, was he facing forward? Because I guess they also, they also have the four mm, staff he was demon. Forward. So yeah, could have pushed him into the enemy team. Oh yeah, that's, that's a fantastic idea. Just bait him around the pug and then blink in Echo. Come on, it's not like Demon hasn't done it in a pub before. This is true. <laughs> they have very good vision up, up right now. One it's up team here, bonding. and oh, they had one up here. It just got dewarded by 4FC. Lombard four staffing himself forward. Mal Monolik, or no, sorry, Demon four staffed him. I just assumed the Windrunner would have a four staff, but in fact, Lombard did go back for a mech. And now at the rune, it'll be this in yeah. Murana who's gotten caught, silenced up, no leap for eight seconds. But do they have detection? EG, no detection at all. Not a sentry. And now they're going to fight. Blomberg comes in, fishes with a shackle, won't connect. The arrow, however, will. Wow, they're heating up all of a sudden. The standard is making some sensational arrows. 61-16 is doing work. They need detection, though. They know that they have a bottom in the game, and usually you have it as soon as she has level 6. She's level 13 by her now. And I don't see any sentries or dust. On yeah, the side against of the Numerana ult, it's almost like being up against a, a team of Nixes. Like you need sentries, even right away. Jay has jumped in. He'll orb and then he'll silence. He'll try to jump out. There's your your illuminate bashing through. He was sent back to the base by Betas. He'll be healing up and TPing in. And now. I don't think 4C can actually push, but they get the tier 1, and that's a big victory for them. That Radiance is so annoying if you are the Earthshaker. Earthshaker, if you get that Blink Disable in and that Bear just hounds you, it's going to be very difficult for them to pull off a nice team fight, and they really do rely on that. J.O. 
has not been too active in the team fights. He's been very good at ganking so far, but usually it's just Bambo trying to pick him off. Again, they need sentries though. I he actually missed the silence. Uh, it wasn't a moonlight shadow, but they can try and use that to dispel some of the enemies for a short time. They also have an E blade now on fear, so their ability to find pickoffs just got a whole lot scarier. He got so so farm so fast. I thought he was a little bit behind in farm, but five one and three. I believe he was one and one at the time. EB and Lincoln's 25 and minutes in. Now you can just hunt support. Boom. <laughs> replicate this, Enchantress. Replicate this. <laughs> She's probably like, Ooh. She couldn't, couldn't enchant it in time, and we'll go down. There is a Diffusal Blade on the Priestess of the Moon. I'm not exactly sure why she went for Diffusal Blade. It's not the greatest damage, and... Blomberg's getting know, caught. Strange. We'll be able to win run away. Should be okay. But here comes your Boots of Travel in from Demon. He could recall Fear into the fight. As we discussed, EG are a very mobile five-man squad. The arrow will come through, and now they might look to push mid. Illuminate being channeled yet again. Beat is. Vlad's up. EG just wanting to end this game early. They want to take this win. Manalik the bear. And move on. No Manalik on the bear for now. There no, it is. There you go. Now the shotgun. All they need to do is kill the bear one more time, and it should be an easy rax for them. I think they could do with a pipe uh, just to prevent all that radiance damage from the bear, as well as a Venomancer Poison Nova. Both of those very good, especially with no BKBs up on EG. And they need some more sustainability, perhaps an urn too, just so they can survive this push. I don't really like the Vlad's pickup from Chen. They only have one melee hero, and that's the Earthshaker. And again, 4FC's uh, damage is almost all magical, so the 5 armor doesn't really help that much. Yeah, I guess this Lone Druid will start to hit for more physical Radiant damage, but Radiance, it's more about the burn, especially with the new buffs to that. The burn! What is it, 50 damage a second now? Yeah, I love, I love Radiance. It used to be, there was a time where I think Radiance was 35 damage a second. And it gave, but it gave evasion. It gave evasion, yeah, 8%. That evasion. Underwhelming. You're getting the value. <laughs> That's some minimal value, my friend, let me tell you that. It's still value. That's it. It's only value <laughs> if it's good value. Keep Tower, it light. Tower gives out a chuckle from the corner. Keep it light. Image, let's see if he shotguns anyone, Fear. I wonder why Demon's there. Actually, because this is some next level mind game. Because it's Demon on the Keep of the Light, I would actually be like, oh, that's the real Demon. Let's go kill him. Let's go. Let's blink on him. Because only they Demon would do blinks. that. And He's an entertainer. Here's a little one. bit of trouble on top lane. There is the... Oh, who's a travel? Oh, they're going to kill the bear again. That's no bear for 40 seconds. Wow. Really caught out. This is huge. Going to fall as well. If he buys back, it doesn't even matter. Now, now EG should be able to push. They lead 13-8. Oh, wow. Demon actually recalled the Earthshaker as he was booster traveling in. That's pretty, pretty cool. Two heroes there. Some next level Keeper of the Light from Demon. Yeah. And Fear is a little bit lacking on mana, but again, they have Demon. They have the, they have, they have the Chakra Magic. They have the Test of Faith. So sustainability is really nice. I, again, I would like to see it coupled with Urn, Radiant's with Mech, with Pipe. They have the Mech, though. Fear City on nearly 200 agility. That shotgun really packs a punch. Wow. He, he's not scared of anything. They don't have any lockdown besides an arrow, yeah, which I don't see. I've, I have not seen Fear get hit by and the shackle, too. And he'll march forward. He throws out just a, an adaptive strike. We'll end up porting back out. Still Demon Sieging. In comes the Marana, though. Leaping forward, gets Monolith. Bambo waiting to counter Fissure if she engages further. There won't be an engagement. Back to the bottom lane, Fear goes. He replicated out. He's got a Yasha now. Once he gets this Manta, can really start to siege with that. There are four Sentry Wars on Bambo, so at least they're a little bit prepared for the Moonlight Shadow. He'll smoke up inside the enemy Ancients. He'll get three teammates, including himself, while doing so. And now they'll head towards top. They can recall Fear back into the fray. Is there a recall yet? Oh, Blomberg in a lot of trouble. Fear brought back into the fight, blown up quickly. Now the Murana leaping away, breaking the coil. Bambo has an Echo Slam, not going to use it just yet. Krilly, shotgun is there. Wave over the top. Fear not pushing him back yet. Gale's going to connect on him, but he should be okay for the time being. The bear actually giving a lot of chase, really diving for this. Morphling in trouble. While that happens, Fear in trouble. He gets rooted. He's still alive. He waves back. He's sent home. They can send him back. They can bring him back in. Fear is just getting knocked around like a punching bag, but only to his own benefit, being recalled right back into the fight. He's lurking here. He's still in danger. He could though. shotgun this Murana, though, if he wants to morph agility. He's thinking about it now. She's been mono leaked. Fear giving chase still running is the stand in. No way out. Will go down. This is a very cute lineup for just moving the morphling around, sending him home, bringing him back in, replicating the farm. Fear has. Oh, Bambo blinks. He tries to get a stun on the 
uh, Enchantress, but not making it. Yeah, it's a cute lineup. It's it's, cool, it's very cool concept. Cute. Yeah, it's it's like okay, we got a shotgun morphling, and that hero is good at one thing really well, which is just blowing up supports. And we just bring him. We let him as aggressive as he likes because we can keep him safe with the hand of God. And then you move him around freely. It's a kind of a cool pocket strat, but uh, I do feel like there were opportunities for Four C this game if they had a stronger draft, mm -hmm. like not the Venomancer, not the Marana, probably. And I mean, you mentioned some of the item selections, maybe not the best, but I think really the draft was sort of the bigger issue for them here. Definitely not Lone Druid, though. I mean, not Lone Druid being a problem. He performed very well, even against a triple lane. He found his farm, and the bear has been doing the majority of the damage to Uji, but the problem is they don't have any follow-up. They need more team fight, just more disables, more silences. Roshan is up. Fully expect Uji to take that before they make the foray into the racks in the mid lane. And that should be your Manta for fear. It's also a Blink Dagger for Demon. He's gone full mobility mode. Now, <laughs> Quelling Blade to eat through the trees. Four staff to move himself around. He can bring his teammates in with recall. He can, and now a ghost scepter too. So, actually, cool. I guess he had the ghost scepter. Pocket strat. All the utility. Farming items. coddle. Is he I gonna get an e blade too? He e should get coddle. One. That would be sick. That would be awesome. Combine that with like a veil on the earthshaker. Oh my good. So you goodness. so you charge your nuke, then you e blade, mm -hmm. and right is about to go off. Then Bamo blinks in. You know what would be cool if you could stack E-Blades? You could double shotgun somebody. Like, and they, they amplify each other's that would, damage. That would be absurd. <laughs> and to crap on top of that? <laughs> uh. Taking out the stack, Fear has his Mantis out. He is the scary, scary Morphling. I believe one of the members on 4C was on par with his net worth, but now he's that was very the, far that ahead. That was the lone droid of Krilly, yeah. but yeah, now... 6,000 gold ahead of Krilly. Krilly's 1 and 3, Fear's 9 and 1, EG also oh. leading in terms of towers. Hey, there's a pipe on the chin. This will make the push a lot easier. Yeah, the Poison Nova won't help you here. Power Shot Spam, minimally useful. EG looking for a Game 2 win for their Corsair Cup. Group C, Loser Bracket Finals, and in comes Fear. Waving forward, blowing Boom Ski up. 246 <laughs> agility. Ouch. Only 5 strength. Why doesn't he go all the way down to 1? Just keeping that 5 strength. Hey, this this 5 strength sounds like a good number. It's very disappointing. Meanwhile, top lane, though. Demon on the chase. Can he recall Fear back into this fight? For the time being, he's still running. J.O. trying to catch up. And while this happens, they rotate around. They'll just walk their way in. And Strangby casually strolling up the river. Oh, my. That's not where he wants to be. Do they Actually, have vision? They, they have got detection? Krilly, though. They've got Krilly. And he's in Viz for now. In comes your Illuminate. Now the bear killing off Demon. They're auto-tagging the bear. They have no detection. Finally, a Sentry Ward gets dropped. Krilly's still running. This Marana ult is about to end. Oh, waving over the top is Fear. He's found him. That's a, either a dead lone druid spirit bear. Does he want the gold or does he want the hero? He wants Both. the bear. Now the Fissure. Waiting for a wave any second it'll come. J.O. just fighting his way out. Fear replicates over the Fissure of Bambo. You can't stop me, Bambo. Not even if you try. Shackle won't connect because of the Lincoln Sphere. Fear, this Morphling is the Godzilla of water creatures. 20 and 10. Deny kill Bambo! A wave south instead. He's just hunting for kills. Get out of here, Bambo. Bambo will go down. Strangby picks him off. And we're not done yet. 6 d one 16 could be in a lot of trouble. There's your hand of God. Krilly does actually find a kill on the backside. But Boom. <laughs> Boom, <laughs> indeed. Well, this is why Morphling is one of the most fun carries. 245 agility. 255 agility. Sitting at 3 strength. I, I, I really, I'm so curious. I, honestly, a lot of people whine about how broken Morphling was at the TI2, but... At least he's fun broken. He just blows people up. PL split pushes. No, no life, steal, life stealer just is invincible and right clicks you. Morphling, there's a little bit of. There's a. He's. Tell, well, me, tell me how you really feel, LD. I love this hero. What about Anti Mage? Anti Mage is okay. I, I, the reason I like Anti Mage is just because he's one of those heroes where like your small mechanics really make a difference. Like how efficiently you move through the jungle, your blinking routes, if you're blinking. Like from the ancients here, and you just wow. jump directly. What into about the next like camp. the PL split and the image control? That can be a big. D I mean, you just don't Dyer's see that too often, though. Most PLs just kind of right-click oh, creeps yeah. until they get farmed. I feel. I don't know. Also, I, li I don't like PL. <laughs> He's just too passive. AM can go and fight also, whereas PL just kind of sits you back. You can fight sometimes. I, I mean, I don't like either of those heroes. Boom! Shotgun. I, I mean, AM's not my favorite hero. I mean, Fear is pretty fun to watch now. Just two shotting heroes doesn't even need a waveform. Pretty fun. More fleet out is fine. I mean, Ice Frog, please buff. Technically, he can purge the Ghost Scepter, but he hasn't even used his Fusal Charge yet. How long ago did he get the Sheep? Or not the Sheep, he's working. Fear could just turn around and kill this Murata, but he's still chasing. He, I'm just, I feel like all we should be doing is just auto-camera oh, on him. Three heroes. Around the map. He's going to walk right into Krilly. 
Shotgun not being used yet. It is still cooling down. He's got it in a second. He won't choose to use it. Now Jayo living through it all. And in comes your Mirana. The arrow. Ooh, blinking away. Should be okay. Fear coming back in. The Mirana in trouble. Shotgun from long range. Tries to finish the job, but a nice leap. Defensively plays. The orb comes through. Just a split second. Too late. And while that's happening, Bambo is finding solo kills. He kills off Boomski on the backside. Now a focus fire from Blomberg. Gets Enchant Totem. Fisher it as well. Where's your backup? It's Petis just patrolling in from the backside. Inspector Chen's on the ch on the job, and now Fear, another shotgun kill likely headed his way. He doesn't use the nukes, waving forward, looking for a shotgun. He's going to blow him up just with an adaptive strike to the face. Where's the sendback? Beat is. I think Fear is getting out of here. No, Aegis pop. And now nice try with the pipe. They don't have. They, why are they sticking around? They don't have anything to kill him. What are they doing? They <laughs> Dem jukes. The, yeah, them jukes. They didn't have they didn't have the sacred arrow up. I don't exactly know why they stayed around. How are you gonna kill the morphing again? Fifteen hundred HP with an EB with a Lincolns with a Manta style. That is just not the best decision making. Replicate into the fountain. The final kill triple for fear. Surprised that kill streak was still going. He does get rooted. Oh, well, Manta out of it. I like morphing. Is he gonna be on escape? He gets rooted at the T three. He's not dying. Are you kidding me? Ultra kill for fear. 28 to 13 your score. 36 minutes in. EG are crushing. And I think at long last they might take this game. And with it the series. Still no Rex claim. 4FC keep on daring to leave their fountain. And EG are going to punish this with extra kills. Krilly's dead. Rampage. That was the longest rampage. rampage in the history wow. of Dota. That was like a three minute rampage. But somehow fear picks it up. He's got 8.4k gold. 19, 1, and 5. How is Morphling not the best carry in Dota? Farm fear, win for EG. It's Come pretty on. simple. Does any other does any other hero just walk around with a rocket launcher on like 13 <laughs> HP? <laughs> He's a fun hero. He's the best. Oh. At least to play. It's not fun to be a support against him. I'll tell you that. Bambo's been shackled. Demon, is he gonna recall in fear? Not just yet. Demon on the run. I think he's recalling him right now. It looks like indeed. Morphling's back. Marana's dead. One agility. He's gone full max agility. And this is where, if you really want to have fun, you could just get a Dagon 5, but... There is a Dagon on the Earthshaker. Good that synergy. synergy. Well, yeah, it's a legit strat for me, G. They you, need Veil. We doubted him, really. We were wrong. Morphling pick really just shining through right now. He is one of the better heroes with this amount of farm. And his ability to nuke, just unparalleled by and, most games. And 4th seed, you, you really need, like, silences or big burst damage. Or just shut him down early game. Yeah, or something like a Skywrath Mage is pretty decent. You get the silence off, you drop the ult after slowing him, but yeah. Or Lena, Lena Lion are both pretty good too. You can try and kill him during a shotgun, but against a Morphling this farm, what can you do besides get found? Every 30 yeah. seconds, he'll continue doing it. And That's going to be it. So EG will GG. sneak out of Group C. GG comes out from 4FC. They gave it a good shot, but EG the better team. And I think 4FC, this... Not that the stand-in played badly this game, but over the course of today, 61-16, they seemed a bit weaker with him than they did with their four roster. And EG trying a couple of new things with the Morphling, with some different picks. 4FC trying also new things with the Venomancer and Mirana, but nothing really impressed me as far as, man, this is the next big thing. Yeah. It was just like, eh, we'll pick some different heroes. A casual team wipe at the fountain. Yeah, no problem. You're not even watching the game anymore. Oh, I've seen fountain camping a lot on my own stream. Yeah, I see it a lot when I play. Don't worry. Okay, well. I see it a lot when I play with you because we get fountain camp. All the time. Because you don't carry. Woof, not like fear. Nobody. Not like fear. Yeah, very few carry like him. And, you know, give EG credit in terms of, well, if you're drafting. So he's drafting for protect one lineup for himself. But He knows how, he knows how to draft to win for yeah. his team, though. It's not a, hey, everyone, you can just, you have to play extremely well. It's just like, just don't feed, try and support me, and secure me farm, and that, that's it. It's just all on fear. And fear does not make too many mistakes in the late game. He reminds me of Eastern Dota players. 24, 1, and 6. 35 kills. He missed 5. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, I think, were just at the bottom when they were just one seven over there. He thing. missed a seventh of the kills. I don't know. Impressive play by fear. It's all right. Kawa man, he's had a long day. He gets to sleep We've now. all had long days. Uh, before you guys go, one last time I'll remind you, if you want a free Dota TV pass for the Corsair Summer Tour 2013, head on over to gc.corsair.com. There is a contest. What's GC stand for? Uh, gaming. 
Cup, I think. I'm not sure, but gc.corsair.com. That's the Ghost of Gamers portal for this event. They are your organizers. We are your broadcasters. And of course, Corsair are your sponsors. But gc.corsair.com. Enter for a chance to win free Dota TV tickets. Hope you guys will consider doing it. Makes them very happy. And on that note, uh, the storyline for today will be that EG moves out of Group C as the second place team. They join Dignitas, who finished first. And well, in the end, the big dogs prevail, but 4FC did not give us some fun games. They were only close for like the first 10 minutes, and then after that, <laughs> downhill. <laughs> All right, guys, we've had a long day. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. We'll be back tomorrow with Group D action day one for the Corsair Summer Tour. After that group is complete, we move on in the playoffs. I'm LD. He's Merlini. If you enjoyed our cast, you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash LDDota, twitter.com slash Merlini Dota. But for now, it's LD and Merlini signing off. See you later.